Hey folks here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the iRulu W20. We're going to take a quick look at the specifications page first. Now the W20 walk-in book is an update to the original W1 walk-in book. In fact, you'd be hard-pressed to think that anything has changed just by looking at the images. The design is almost entirely the same, with the same colorful options that comes in both green and orange, with its rounded tapered edges that reminds us a lot of Nokia Lumia devices to its overall super slim and satisfying build. However, underneath the hood there are a few differences. The w Instead of the older Bay Trail series processor, it uses the Intel Cherry Trail, which promises a bump in both the performance as well as the graphic uh, video performance, so it should make slightly better um, in terms of the overall usability. It's still a quad-core chipset, you still have the same 2GB of RAM, I do wish that was upgraded to 3GB, but uh, not the worst thing in the world, it still runs really smoothly. Still have 32GB of built-in flash storage, which is expandable via a microSD card slot. Another difference is the battery. Instead of having a 7,200 milliamp hour capacity, it's been reduced to 6,000 milliamp hours. It's slightly lighter as well, but the reduction in capacity actually doesn't really correlate with a reduction in battery life. It's still rated at around six hours since Cherry Trail is even more energy efficient. Um, still, we do wish that the original capacity was included just so that you would get you know, a slightly longer battery performance, but alas, that is not the case here. Again, exactly exact same design. Um, a few other differences we wanted to show you really quickly. You do get the same case, the keyboard case as well. Same 10.1 inch uh, 720p display. Um, same as far as the general apps and performance. Taking a look but, at the uh, kind of logistics of the design, everything is really similar except instead of the speakers being on the very top, if you guys remember, stereo speakers were there. Now they're mounted one on the left and one on the right. So we have um, a slightly more separated sound. So if you're watching movies, it comes alive a little bit more. So it still gets really loud, although it's a little bit tinny. Now the micro SD card slot has also been covered up and you still have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You still have a micro USB and mini uh, HDMI port, so those things are basically the same, although you now use micro USB to charge it instead of the proprietary charging port, which we did not like on the original W1 walk-in book, so it's a nice improvement that they found here. Um, but one thing that did, they did take away, as you can see here on the spine, is a full-size USB 2.0 port. Um, you still get OTG support, so you can plug in a included little dongle here, so that gives you a full-size USB um, transform, so you can pop in a thumb drive or accessories, but it's not a direct port on the side, so that's a little bit disappointing. form factor remains consistent with what we saw before, and again, some more specifications can be found here. Cherry Trail goes up to 1.92 gigahertz, as opposed to only 1.33 gigahertz, so a slight bump in the performance, but the hardware is otherwise exactly the comparison, same. you can see this is what the original W1 looks like. You can see the power placement micro SD card is revealed, although you did have that full USB port and a proprietary charging. Just part. like on the original walk in book, the back is made out of this plastic material that's extremely glossy and shiny. It makes it look a lot more expensive than it really is and adds to the, I think, really beautiful build and design that they have going on. However, it is a fingerprint and smudge magnet. The and the case remains pretty much the same as the original W1's case. It has the same microfiber internal, which is really soft and easily attaches using magnets onto the uh, tablet itself, although some cons still remain. So for instance, it's not a smart case, so if you fold everything closed, uh, the tablet doesn't go to sleep automatically, and if you accidentally hit a key or something during transportation, the tablet still wakes up. With that being said, it works really nice if you have a desk surface to type on, and for longer emails and productivity tools, it really is great and a huge improvement over the virtual on-screen keyboard. Um, it's an island-style layout which is fairly responsive and tactile, as you can see see here, and it also has a surprisingly good trackpad, which is large and spacious and also multi-touch enabled to support gestures such as two fingers to scroll as well as to swipe between open applications, and we'll show you guys some of those gestures in a moment. Uh, it isn't backlit, but again, after a few moments of usage, I really got used to it, and it doesn't drain that much power either, so uh, it's just a plug-and-play solution that works really quite well for the With size. With the display turned on, you notice that the IPS panel does a surprisingly good job of showing off colors and contrast. 
View angles are quite wide, although just like on the original, it's a glossy display, which means that light does tend to reflect on it, and so if you're outdoors in the sun, it doesn't make for as ideal of an experience, but overall, it's pretty good. One area that I kind of forgot to mention before in terms of hardware upgrades includes a better camera system. Instead of 2 megapixels, it's been bumped up to 5 megapixels for the rear-facing camera, which improves the video performance slightly and also the camera performance uh, for emergency shots and also for video chatting applications. It's pretty bright and makes it a better experience for Skype and the like. The speakers themselves still sound very good. They're loud um, and they lack a little bit of punch in terms of depth, but uh, indeed for watching videos, we didn't have any problems as well as uh, listening to music. Um, it's a lot better than other tablets in the same price category that we've checked out from similar manufacturers. So here we have a YouTube video that's playing back and you can see that it buffers videos really Really well even if you're playing it back at 720 or 1080p resolution with that being said you know 720p is really the max that you, sh you should be watching your videos at since uh, that's what the display is capable of showing and that will also save you your battery life as well as on um, performance its videos are pretty fast to load and also scrubbing um, also loads up the video nicely and of course it's a little bit dependent on your Wi-Fi speeds but in general we were pleased with the experience compare with the original w1 it's definitely a little bit snappier and smoother as we multi-touch and go through several different gestures and use the UI. So launching to some of the shortcuts, I'm using two fingers right now to basically scroll on the trackpad and that works really well. I can also use three fingers and I can tap upwards to uh, take a look at the various screens and various apps I have and multi-touch by tapping and swapping between them. I can also use three fingers down to basically exit out of everything and go back into this main screen. When you first power on the tablet, Tablet, you'll be greeted to a tablet version of the Windows 10 experience, and that gives you extra large tiles, kind of reminiscent of Windows 8 and 8.1, for navigating your main apps. And you can also download more mobile games uh, through the uh, full Microsoft Store, which is actually pretty easy to do and a nice experience. Um, otherwise, again, this is a full legacy Windows 10 computer, which gives you the freedom of downloading regular apps. Um, of course, it's not as recommended for super demanding tasks like Photoshop, but yes, theoretically, you can download those things in addition to Minecraft. All those full versions of Windows apps you have on your regular computer can run on here without that many problems. So again, uh, the nice thing about the Microsoft Store is a lot of these are more optimized for a tablet experience. You can also find music and movies and streaming video content just like you saw on YouTube is great with Hulu, Netflix, and the like. Um, of course, you can also save it to a memory card and watch it that way. So those are a few things about the apps that are built on here. You also do have one TB of free cloud storage when you first sign up for an account uh, with Microsoft and register, so that's another plus. And there's also a built-in version of Word, PowerPoint, and Excel you get as kind of a bonus um, that allows you to do a bit more productivity when on the go. And especially with the keyboard here, it makes a lot of sense. It makes for a fairly compelling tool for students who are maybe checking out their documents or giving presentations as a business person, and you can definitely do quite a bit with the built-in software on here. So going back into the traditional legacy interface is also fairly simple. I can tap on here and now we're transported back into this desktop-like view. Gestures or using the trackpad can be accessed on screen. Swi swiping from the edge of the display also brings up all of your currently open applications that you can tap into. And you can also, of course, exit out of it by tapping on the capacitive key on the very bottom there. Otherwise, again, it's a pretty snappy experience as far as web browsing and general day-to-day -day usage is concerned. Same thing with opening up Word documents and some light flash games that you can load directly in the browser also worked without any problems. Of course, it is using the Edge browser by default instead of Chrome, but you can install Chrome if you want to. Chrome is a little faster, but Edge improves the battery life, which speaking of, again, got us around six hours in our testing, which is the same as the W1 despite a smaller 6,000 mAh capacity, so it works pretty well. Charging up using micro USB is also a little bit faster than the older W1. We fully charged this up in under three hours, which is also quite impressive. And of course, it's a lot easier to take with you and just bring a regular power bank and you're basically ready to go. It's, it's a full laptop that uses the standard micro USB to charge, which is a win in our books. Of course, you can also easily attach it to HDMI to give presentations, slideshows. So at the end of the 
the day, just like the original Walken book, the second generation Walken book, we were impressed by the W20. It's the first model that really improves the performance by offer offering a slightly faster processor, although the RAM is still the same. And it's definitely going to please uh, users who multitask just a bit more. Still not good enough for heavy multitasking and to run, again, photo editing software per se, but uh, it does run a little better if you are streaming full HD videos as well as playing back a few more games and apps that demand the GPU a little bit more. And this really shows uh, here with the uh, Cherry Trail processor compared to the Bay Trail chipset. Um, otherwise, memory is still a little bit low. 32 gigabytes, I would say, is the um, kind of limit where hopefully we want to see larger capacity since once the operating system and all the apps are installed, you're not left with that much storage for your own content. Uh, but thankfully, you can expand the memory on here using a micro SD card slot, which again is concealed by a little slot on the side this time, which is pretty nice. So you don't accidentally lose the card. Um, otherwise, the display is still nice and sharp despite not being 1080p. It does save you on battery a little bit more. And again, you do have a growing selection of games optimized for tablets. Uh, Wi-Fi is pretty swift and speedy on here and as always we're surprised with what you can get these days for a sub $200 tablet that runs on a full version of Windows uh, and can in a lot of people's cases even replace a computer um, especially if we're just doing some light word processing and some light video streaming it's really good enough battery life is also good enough uh, for most folks um, some slight quirks uh, aside like the lack of a full-size USB port which uh, we did prefer on the original to this version, I think that the design and the price point really comes together and makes this for a very good upgrade. Of course, if you already have the original uh, compared to the W20, there isn't a huge need to upgrade. But if you are in the market for an affordable Windows tablet, definitely check this out. The construction is a lot better than I expected. Being made out of plastic and polycarbonate, it actually feels quite substantial and there's no creaking or cringing uh, from the typical construction that you'll find here. So everything is nicely put together. Together. You can check out more details in our official written review, but for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the upgraded iRulu Walken Book W20 quad-core uh, Intel Cherry Trail processor.